people in several parts of the world were seen surprised as streams of light began flashing. The phenomena was seen in multiple locations for the first time. These were auroras. Stunning light shows that have traditionally been reserved for high altitude places on the planet. The aurora or nano lights were kicked up in several parts of the world, including in India, where bright red lights flashed in the skies of Ladakh, peaking interest across the country as to what happened. The picturesque phenomena was catalyzed by one of the strongest solar storms that have slammed into the Earth. The solar eruptions were the result of activity peaking on the Sun as it blasted plasma and material throughout the solar system, hitting the inner planets including Earth. Hello and welcome viewers, you are watching In Depth with your host Kriti Mishra. May 2024 has already proven to be a particularly stormy month for our sun. During the first full week of May, a barrage of large solar flares and coronal mass ejections launched clouds of charged particles and magnetic fields towards Earth, creating the strongest solar storm to reach Earth in more than two decades and possibly one of the strongest displays of auroras on record in the past. 500 years. The first signs of the solar storm started late on May 7th with two strong solar flares. From May 7th to 11th, multiple strong solar flares and at least seven CMEs stormed towards Earth. Eight of the flares in this period were the most powerful type, known as X class. Travelling at a phenomenal speed, the coronal mass injections or CMEs bunched up in waves that reach Earth starting May 10th, creating a long-lasting geomagnetic storm that reached a rating of G5, the highest level on the geomagnetic storm scale and one that hasn't been seen since 2003. When the storm reached Earth, it created brilliant auroras seen around the globe. Auroras were even visible at unusually low latitudes, including the southern US and northern India. The strongest auroras were seen at the night of May 10th and they continued to illuminate night skies throughout the weekend. By one measure of geomagnetic storm strength, called the disturbance storm, time index which dates back to 1957, this storm was similar to historic storms in 1958 and 2003. And with reports of auroras visible to as low as 26 degrees magnetic latitude, This recent storm may compete with some of the lowest latitude aurora sightings on record over the past five centuries, though scientists are still assessing this ranking. A solar storm is a disturbance on the sun, releasing energy in the form of solar flares or coronal mass ejections or CMEs or solar wind. When these charged particles reach Earth, they interact with the planet's magnetic field potentially causing geomagnetic storms. These storms can impact various technologies including satellite communications, power grids and GPS navigation systems. Additionally, they pose potential risks to astronauts and airline passengers due to increased radiation exposure. While not all solar storms are severe, strong ones have the potential to disrupt critical infrastructure and cause widespread technological and societal disruptions. Let's also deconstruct and demystify some of the important concepts for our viewers. What is a solar flare? 
Solar flares are joint explosions on the sun that send energy, light, and high-speed particles into space. These flares are often associated with solar magnetic storms, known as coronal mass ejections. The number of solar flares increases approximately every 11 years, and the sun is currently moving towards another solar maximum. That means more flares will be coming, some small and some big, enough to send their radiation all the way to Earth. The biggest flares are known as X-class flares, based on classification system that divides solar flares according to their strength. The smaller ones are A-class, near background levels, followed by B, C, M and X. What is a solar prominence? A solar prominence, also known as a filament, when viewed against the solar disk, is large, bright feature extending outward from sun's surface. Prominences were anchored to the sun's surface in the photosphere and extend outwards into the sun's hot outer atmosphere called the corona. What are coronal mass ejections or CMEs? The outer solar atmosphere, the corona, is structured by strong magnetic fields. Where these fields are closed, often above sunspot groups, the confined solar atmosphere can suddenly and violently release bubbles of gas and magnetic fields called coronal mass ejections. A large CME can contain a billion tons of matter that can be accelerated to several million miles per hour in a spectacular explosion. So does all solar activity impact Earth? Why or why not? Well, we can divide solar activity into four main components, solar flares, coronal mass ejections, high-speed solar wind, and solar energetic particles. Solar flares impact Earth only when they occur on the side of the Sun facing Earth. Because flares are made of photons, these travel out directly from the flare site. So if we can see the flare, we can be impacted by it. How strong is solar wind compared to wind on Earth? While the solar wind is very weak compared to wind on Earth, though it is much, much faster. When we measure solar wind speeds, we typically get speeds of 1 to 2 million miles per hour. They end up being weaker because there is very little of it. The solar wind density is usually about 100 particles per cubic inch. Since solar wind is measured in nanopascals, it is approximately 1000 million times weaker than winds here on Earth. What are sunspots and how do they relate to space weather? The magnetic field in sunspots stores energy that is released in solar flares. As a result, flares usually occur in a cycle that mimics the 11-year sunspot cycle. Other forms of space weather such as geomagnetic storms and proton radiation showers follow a similar cycle. Sunspots usually occur in groups, usually as simple pairs, but at times in complicated arrangements with many spots and complex shapes. These unusual regions most often produce solar flares. Space weather forecasters use the complexity shapes of sunspots to make flare forecast. The more complex the groups of spots, the more likely a flare will occur. What are the northern lights and are they related to space weather? When the sun is active, it often produces mass ejections that interact with Earth's magnetic field. Electric currents begin to flow in the upper atmosphere and these currents produce the auroras, which occurs almost simultaneously around both the North and the South Poles. What is geomagnetic activity? The geomagnetic activity is derived from measurements made at magnetic observatories located in the polar cap, auroral and sub-auroral zones. The data are processed to produce an hourly range index to characterize the range of magnetic field variations measured during one hour and ground level. What is space weather? Space weather refers to changes in the space environment and geomagnetic disturbances resulting from eruptions on the Sun. Space weather ultimately affects human activities and technologies on Earth and in space. What is solar cycle? The solar cycle is a cycle 
that the sun's magnetic field goes through approximately every 11 years. What is aurora? An aurora is a natural light display that shimmers in the sky. Blue, red, yellow, green and orange lights shift gently and change shape like softly blowing curtains. Auroras are only visible at night and usually only appear in lower polar regions. Let's also take a look at some of the sun facts. Come along. From our vantage point on Earth, the sun may appear like an unchanging source of light and heat in the sky. But the sun is a dynamic star, constantly changing and sending energy out into space. The science of studying the sun and its influence throughout the solar system is called heliophysics. The sun is the largest object in our solar system. Its diameter is about 1.4 million kilometers. Its gravity holds the solar system together, keeping everything from the biggest planets to the smallest bits of debris in orbit around it. Even though the sun is the center of our solar system and essential to our survival, it's only an avid star in terms of its size. Stars up to 100 times larger have been found. And many solar systems have more than one star. By studying our sun, scientists can better understand the workings of distant stars. The hottest part of the sun is its core, where temperatures top 27 million Fahrenheit. This part of the sun we call is its surface, the photosphere. In one of the sun's biggest mysteries, the sun's outer sphere, the corona gets hotter the further it stretches from the surface. So let's take a look at some of the sun facts. Namesake. The sun has been called by many names. The Latin word for sun is sol, which is the main adjective for all things sun related. Sola. Helios, the sun god in ancient Greek mythology, lends his name to many sun related terms as well as heliosphere. Potential for life. Yet, the sun could not harbor life as we know because of its extreme temperature and radiation. Yet, life on earth is only possible because of sun's light and energy. Size and distance. Our sun is a medium sized star with a radius of about 7 lakh kilometers. Many stars are much larger, but the sun is far more massive than our home planet. It would take more than 3 lakh 30,000 Earths to match the mass of Sun and it would take 1.3 million Earths to fill the Sun's volume. The Sun is about 93 million miles that is 150 million kilometers from Earth. Its nearest stellar neighbor is Alpha Century Triple Star System. Orbit and Radiation the Sun is located in the Milky Way galaxy in a spiral arm called the Orion Spur that extends outward from the Sagittarius arm. The Sun orbits the center of the Milky Way, bringing with it the planets, asteroids, comets and other objects in our solar system. Our solar system is moving with an average velocity of 4,50,000 miles per hour. But even at this speed, it takes about 230 million years for the Sun to make one complete trip around the Milky Way. Formation The Sun was formed about 4.6 billion years ago in a giant spinning cloud of gas and dust called the Solar Nebula. As the nebula collapsed under its own gravity, it spun faster and flattened into a disk. Most of the nebula's material was pulled toward the center to form our Sun, which accounts for 99.8% of our solar system's mass. Much of the remaining material from the planets and other objects that now orbit the Sun. Structure The Sun is a huge ball of hydrogen and helium held together by its own gravity. The Sun has several regions. The interior regions include the core, the radiative zone and the convection zone. Moving outward, the visible surface or photosphere is next, then the chromosphere followed by transition zone 
and then the corona the sun's expansive outer atmosphere solar energy is essential to agriculture cultivating land producing crops and raising livestock fossil fuels such as coal oil and natural gas currently produce most of our electric and engine power they also produce almost all of our pollution plus they are non renewable meaning there is a limited supply the sun on the other hand offers free and clean energy in abundance in fact it gives much more energy that we can ever possibly use the only questions are how and when we will take full advantage of it more programs of sunset tv subscribe to our youtube channel and don't forget to like and share them